I'm Kinslow from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can just call me Johnny K. I'm gonna be rebuilding my 671 big block Chevy blower motor for my 1953 Chevy Pearl Street car. Figure I'll just put a little mini series together and uh, let you watch it and if it helps you out, awesome. All right, let's talk about disassembling the block part one. You just pulled out your big block Chevy, you got it on your engine stand and you're ready to start yanking stuff off. Get some Ziploc bags and a black Sharpie marker, and you want to bag and tag all your hardware. That way, a bolt doesn't go off that way or that way, and you're looking for it. Just bag and tag all your hardware, keep it organized, and you're way ahead of the game just from the get-go. All right, one word of caution. The big black Chevy head, just one cylinder head, weighs about 84 pounds. So brace yourself when you go to pop that sucker off your engine stand. Uh, you can also use a cherry picker and rig it up that way. One thing I would recommend before you start pulling off your rocker arms, your push rods and lifters, go out and purchase a valve train organizer. You just don't want to pull out the push rods and throw them all in a Ziploc bag. You always want to take out the push rods and the rocker arms. If it comes off cylinder number one, it should go back on cylinder number one. You never want to mix match, okay, cylinder number one, I'll throw that on cylinder number eight, those components. Always keep the components just the way they came out of the block is the way you want to put them back in the block. So buy yourself a valve train organizer. You can make one out of a two by six and drill some holes in it and label it yourself. That's a cheap way to do. Either way it works, but be organized. When you pull your harmonic balancer or dampener, as some people like to call it, the puller works great for this. You can purchase this puller at AutoZone. It's not that expensive. It works better than the three finger puller because it's pulling evenly on the center of the hub. Whereas a three finger puller, you're exerting pressure on the outer hub and almost like you're trying to pull it off the inner hub. But that's just my two cents. Take it with a grain of salt. That's the way I see it. Now that all your components are removed, you're left with just the rotating assembly. It's time to purchase a stamp set so you can match mark the main caps and the rods. Starting at the front of the motor, on the driver's side, it's one, three, five, seven are the cylinder boards. And the passenger side is two, four, six, eight cylinder boards. Again, starting from the front of the motor and looking towards the back, the main caps are one, two, three, four, five. Now you don't have to stamp number five because that's the largest of the main caps. It can only go in one spot. Also take note that there's little arrows. These are from the factory. They're cast into the caps. There's little arrows that point forward towards the front of the motor. Just remember that. Look, look at, take a look at your main cap right now. Look at it, you'll see the little arrow. It should be pointing forward. If it's pointing towards the rear of the motor, somebody put that cap on backwards. Ooh. Okay, now here's a side note for the new guys. The Chevy motor, in my particular application, the Chevy motor rotates clockwise. And this viewpoint is taken from standing in front of the motor and you're looking at the harmonic balancer. So you're at the front of the motor, you're looking at the harmonic balancer, you're looking at it, you're looking at it, it's looking at you, you're looking at it, it's looking back at you. Okay, that sucker turns clockwise. However, if you go and stand on the back side of the motor, like you're sitting in the seat of your car looking out the windshield and you're looking at the back of the motor, your viewpoint will see that crankshaft turn counterclockwise. The reason I'm bringing this up is when you assemble your motor, it's a good practice to always turn your crank and rotating assembly clockwise. Just my two cents. But depending if you're standing at the back of the motor, and if you start turning the crank what you think is clockwise, you're actually turning it backwards. If you don't believe me, get your buddy, and one of you stand at the front of the motor, and you stand at the back of the motor, and you tell him, hey, turn the crank clockwise. He's going to turn it clockwise like the motor rotates. 
but your viewpoint is going to see it going counterclockwise. So just kind of remember your orientation of where you're standing depends which direction you're going to turn that crank. All right, now it's time for you to get your notebook and a pen, and I hope to see you for part two, entitled, are you ready? Your first reading. All right, may God bless you today, and have a great day.